It's been a long time since we looked at a product from Lidl, so today I have this lead acid charger which I got for about $16. From time to time they have these collections of automotive related products in Lidl shops uh, and they had this charger among other stuff but it really caught my eye because of this uh, marketing wank which is printed on the box. This thing has a flirt processor. And if you are wondering what the hell is a FLIRT processor, it's a full logic intelligent regulation technology, which in my opinion sounds like the kind of title you would find stuffed with uh, keywords, maybe on AliExpress or eBay, except uh, uh, Lidl made it an acronym and slapped a chip icon next to it to make it look cool. So this charger is supposed to handle both 6 volts and 12 volts uh, lead, uh, lead acid batteries with up to 5 amps charging current and up to 120 amp hours from a 240 volt AC input. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solar mass color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out. I guess the capacity limit is like a safe switch. Uh, set to 24 hours maybe it automatically stops if it doesn't reach end of charge and 24 hours have passed uh, this thing doesn't appear to have an universal input uh, it's stated as 220 up to 240 volts input so it might have um, an ac transformer inside instead of a switch mode power supply Although that could be possible even with a switch mode uh, power supply which doesn't have the power factor correction circuit. Considering the 5 amps charging current it will take this more than 12 hours to fully charge an average size car battery if it were completely drained or you could leave it connected uh, during cold nights to trickle charge and keep your battery full. Supposedly it has this uh, special pulse mode to do that because I'm not sure how some batteries would handle that constant charging. But let's open the box and take a closer look. I've connected the charger to power for a quick test and uh, all I could find is this very old um, compact uh, 12 volt lead acid battery which is a uh, long gun it has um, high internal uh, resistance and it's not taking a charge anymore not even from my uh, bench power supply so if i try to test the charger with this uh, battery it uh, won't do anything because uh, the charger does have a uh, microcontroller inside and it will not start the charge if it doesn't detect that the battery is taking a charge and it has the correct uh, voltage so no matter how many times i try uh, it will not try to charge this battery and this is a, a nice uh, protection feature uh, to prevent you from charging unsafe batteries but i would like to try uh, connecting this to one of my electronic dummy loads to see if we can uh, trick it to uh, start charging unfortunately i couldn't fool this uh, charger to start and dumping uh, power into my dummy load because it is looking very precisely at the voltage measured on the battery terminals and if it doesn't match what it has stored in its internal memory it will not start charging i tried fooling it with a bench power supply to simulate a voltage on the charging leads but uh, it detects that it starts charging but it immediately goes to the uh, higher limit uh, the higher threshold for uh, a battery for lead acid battery and it stops charging because it thinks uh, charging is complete so this is really an interesting problem uh, i'm open to suggestions here please let me know in the comments below what would you do what would you use to trick this charger into uh, starting uh, a charge and dumping energy into a dummy load i am out of ideas here i don't know what else to try so I'm going to continue with a uh, teardown of this unit because I'm sure everyone is curious uh, how a flirt processor looks like. It must be some new cutting edge stuff. So yeah, let's do the teardown. Now earlier I mentioned that uh, this might uh, have a transformer inside. 
but now I don't think that anymore because the unit is very light so it's uh, most likely a uh, switch mode power supply in here but it has uh, only a 240 volt input it's not universal input it looks like they're using these uh, triangular security bits uh, they don't want people getting easily inside of this uh, unit but that's not a problem you can usually find these in a uh, screwdriver kit so I can open this Here's something interesting. This thing has a rubber seal and so it, it makes sense why they uh, label this as uh, IP65. So it, it must uh, resist uh, water and uh, dust. And this is our famous Flirt processor. It's a Holtec HT66F0185. This is an LM324 quad op-amp and if you google this you'll find that it's a very cheap microcontroller manufactured by Holtec. It has all that is needed for this product integrated inside the microcontroller. It has a 12-bit ADC, it has a comparator, it has a flash and EEPROM memory, so it doesn't need uh, any additional external memory. It has PWM capability and LCD driver because we have this um, LCD which is driven directly by the microcontroller thus saving cost. On the power supply board this is basically a switch mode uh, power supply uh, and the output of this power supply is controlled by that microcontroller but taking a closer look yeah the PCB might be one of the uh, cheap uh, phenolic type ones but we have some decent clearers on the uh, uh, from the uh, main side to the secondary side we have uh, I wouldn't say good soldering but decent soldering at least when comparing this with other stuff which I usually get from Aliexpress and on the input of this power supply we have um, uh, some filtering we have a common mode uh, choke uh, we have an x-rated capacitor we have a fuse what else the capacitors are of course uh, the electrolytics are one hung low we do have some celastic here I believe it is used to secure the capacitors but as well the wires which are uh, coming from the transformer and are soldered to the PCB. We have a decent amount of uh, aluminium as heat sinks for the active devices in this power supply and on the secondary uh, we have uh, an inductor for filtering and uh, minimal capacitance on the uh, secondary of this power supply. I got the unit back together. I found it rather difficult to assemble or disassemble, but they probably have entire lines of skilled workers which are able to put these together pretty fast. I guess I was expecting a FR4 PCB to be used inside as I'm seeing more often now for China made electronic goods, but that's not such a big deal considering the price of around $16. For comparison I found a similar charger on Aliexpress that sells for twice as much and you will not get any warranty or trusted compliance testing. With this product you can be sure the uh, labels on the back are real, the unit has been independently tested and you will also get a 3 year warranty that is if you keep the receipt for that loan. Now after putting the unit back uh, together I'm thinking I did not see any shunt resistor on the output to give it a current measurement ability for the uh, uh, constant current capability that I believe it has. But I will uh, look back on the footage to see if there was any shunt resistor. It's, it's just uh, something that uh, I remembered now after putting it back together and I thought I'd uh, mention this. So it's kind of hard to beat what Lidl is offering on the European market. They have a huge distribution network, high purchasing power, so they can make things like this available for cheap. Sure, you can argue there are low quality parts used inside. Those capacitors will likely fail at some point if you use this intensively, but most people will use it a couple of times a year, so that should allow it to last three years with no problems. I know this kind of sounds like advertisement but unfortunately Lidl doesn't pay me for these videos. I just uh, find the, 
their products useful. Same as with the other tools I've shown, they are simply good enough for the average hobbyist. I can't really say how good or how bad of a charger it really is, but it's not rocket science with these lead acid uh, battery chargers. It probably has a constant uh, voltage and a constant current regulation loop. So the technology is pretty simple. As you saw, you can, you can build something like this with the simplest microcontroller as long as it has some PWM capability and some ADC inputs. So I would expect they uh, got this right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts and I'll see you next week with a new video.